things that are going to follow in his steps. So I wouldn't want to be anywhere but here. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. Don't flex your muscles. Flex your mind. Watch a word from the Lord. Thursday nights at 9. I did for science. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. James Oldfield here with you. Thank you for watching. We hope that you have your Bible and uh, maybe pen and paper ready so that we can study along together. And as always, if you have any questions uh, about anything we're saying or you want to uh, get a copy of this program, here's how you can reach me, 276-340-2653. We'll meet at 250 The Boulevard there in Eden, North Carolina. And we'd be glad for you to visit with us any opportunity you have. And word from the Lord at gmail.com is how you can reach me. If you uh, want to ask a question as we're going through this lesson, uh, as, the, as the hour progresses, we'll put our phone numbers up and you can uh, call us. And we'll have some dialogue and discussion about the topic that we are, are going to be discussing tonight. But I want to give you some information that uh, might be helpful to you. We always try to do this. 823 Starling Avenue is where you can meet with the, the Church of Christ, the Lord's people in, in uh, Martinsville. And also 120 American Legion in Danville is where the, the saints meet in Danville. And uh, we really want to encourage you to go out and visit uh, either one of those places or all three, if you have a chance. Uh, we meet on Thursday nights in Eden for Bible study. Martinsville meets on uh, Wednesday nights for Bible study. And Danville meets on Tuesday nights for Bible study. So, and, of course, we all meet on Sundays uh, for our worship as the Lord commanded upon the first day of the week. So if you have a chance to come out into, uh, into our communities, we hope that you will uh, take advantage of that. What does the Bible say is also coming on on WHIGTV. Dot com. That's out of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, and uh, that's on Tuesday nights at 9, <clears throat> 9 p.m. So I want to uh, encourage you to watch that as well. We are constantly trying to uh, uh, get the word out in every possibility way we can. Uh, we are uh, always in the process of, of uh, looking for new venues. We are currently trying to get up on the... Uh, uh, the internet and uh, via uh, some internet radio, and that will be coming uh, very, very soon. And so we hope that you will uh, still uh, that you'll pay paying attention and look for that coming in the future. Friends, tonight I, I want to address a, a topic that has been in the news tonight, as um, uh, many of you probably have been paying attention to uh, the news and uh, what has been going on in the news regarding uh, uh, some of the social aspects of our, of our society. One of the big things is the, the homosexual agenda. And uh, I think now there's two more states that now have uh, so-called legalized same-sex marriages. I'm not real sure that they have, that they have actually gone through the, the proper channels of legalizing it. Many states have overturned the will of the people, like California even, as liberal as California is, they, uh, uh, the, the people there voted that they did not want uh, same-sex marriage. They didn't want it to be legalized or defined as, as uh, two men or two women. They want it to be defined as one man and one woman, and the courts have overturned that. And so they have legalized it through uh, by making end runs around the law. I think Rhode Island now is another one in Minnesota today. And, you know, one of the reasons why these things happen, I, I believe is because in religion and uh, in the way we speak, in the way that churches have, have uh, been teaching, they've blurred the line. They've blurred the line between what is right and wrong. They've blurred the line between what is good and evil. And the result is always going to be 
when you start crossing the line, smudging the line, blurring the line, pretty soon the line will be erased completely. And that is really what we're, what we're dealing with. We're dealing with a, a society that has so blurred the line that now anything goes, and the result is because in religion, people want to blur the line. Now, if you will, let's go with me and let's read Isaiah 5 and verse 20, and we'll see what we mean. You know, when you start blurring the line, it becomes very difficult very difficult to determine what is right and what is wrong. And it gets to the point that people start calling the things that are wrong, they start calling them, them good. Notice Isaiah 5 and verse 20. says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. And he goes on to say, Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes, and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to, uh, to mingle strong drink, which justify, in other words, which justify the wicked for reward, and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. So what they're doing is they're turning the, uh, the, the, the rules, the system, the laws, the the, uh, uh, the standard, if you will, upside down, and it's becoming more and more relative. Now, what do we mean by relative? Well, friends, when we talk about something being relative, that means it really depends upon the person. Now, here's a, a way that, um, uh, that my science teacher, I know we have some people in the audience that love science, Here, here's the way, here's the way he, he, my science teacher in high school described relative. He said, he said hot and cold or temperature is relative. And we said, well, what do you mean by that? And he said, well, if you go to Alaska, if you go to Alaska and, uh, and you're up there and they say, well, it's, it's 45 degrees out here. They say, oh, it's, that's warm. That's warm. But if you go down to Houston, Texas and say it's 45 degrees, they go, oh, it's cold. But it's still 45 degrees. See, it's relative. It depends on the people and where they are. And that's what people are doing with morality. They are making it so subjective and so relative that no one really can say this is right or this is wrong. No one is really making that distinction or, making the, uh, or putting that line in the sand, if you will, that says, well, this is what you're crossing, and now you've crossed over into evil. You've crossed over into something that, that's wrong. Now, I want you to consider something. In Leviticus chapter 10, I want you to notice that uh, uh, one of the problems that early on in the, in the Jews' history, as they were coming out of, out of, the, out of uh, Egyptian bondage, God set up for them the priesthood. And it wasn't too long after that that you have uh, some guys like Nadab and Abihu, and what they're doing is they're going to blur the line again. They're going to try to cross the line and blur the line and the result is they're going to be destroyed. But I want you to notice what God tells Aaron, their father, when, uh, 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 when, after he destroys them. He says, Do not drink wine or strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee, when ye go into the tabernacle of the, of the congregation, lest ye die. It shall be a statute forever. It shall be a statute forever. Uh, and he says, And ye may put difference between holy and unholy, between unclean and clean. So there was, supposed to, there was supposed to be a line, a demarcation, something that was going to be a clear uh, uh, example that this is what's right and this is what's wrong. Don't blur that line. Don't cross that line. We can look at another one. In Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter uh, 44, I believe it is. Ezekiel 44 and verse 23. Notice what God tells his people again. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. And so if we know where the lines are, if we know where the lines are, we're not going to have much of a problem. But when we start blurring the lines, people, when we start blurring the lines, then it makes it, it, makes it easier for people to say, well, it's okay to do this. And pretty soon that line's going to be completely gone. Now, 
what are we talking about? Let's, get, let's give of an example of something. Well, if you blur the line, it's very difficult then to call something a sin. It's very difficult to say something's wrong when the line starts to get blurred and the, the line of demarcation between good and evil is, is, is fuzzy. Well, you know, it's kind of relative, kind of subjective. And so we don't really know if it is or not. And one of the reasons why is because of the way <clears throat> that people in religion talk. When you don't speak where the Bible speaks, and when you don't uh, uh, give Bible for what you're saying, or you don't totally use definitions that the Bible gives, then guess what you're going to do, friends? You're going to start blurring the line between what God really says and what men then want to do. Here's an example of this. Here lately in the news, you've heard uh, the, the Pope. You know, the Pope gave a, uh, gave a speech, and in this speech he was quoted as saying that homosexuality was okay. Now, here's the headline from, now this is the headline from uh, Fox News. This is going to be a guy that's writing for Fox News. He is the, the resident Catholic on, on the panel, I guess. But and this is what he says. He says, what the Pope Francis really said about gays, and no, it's not new. In other words, he, it's not really new that he's uh, uh, saying this. He says it's not really a new position from the Catholic Church. So he's going to kind of back, uh, back talk or backtrack or explain what the Pope meant when the Pope said what he said. Now, everybody's quoting the Pope as saying, well, I can't judge, I can't judge homosexuals. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to necessarily comment on that. I want to comment on the fact that there is so much uh, gray area, so much blurred line between what you say and what you mean that it gives people room to... Uh, go back and forth and say, well, we're not really sure what he meant. Now, here is this, um, uh, this, this Catholic priest, uh, and I can't think of his name now, uh, Jonathan somebody, and, uh, and he's going to explain to us what Pope Francis, what Papa Francis, what Daddy Francis meant. And notice what he says. He says, let's just start with this. Uh, uh, I'm going to start with the second little paragraph, second line here. He said, this is the worst coverage of a religious story I have seen to date. And he's talking about the Huffington Post putting a headline that says, Breakthrough, Pope okay with gays. He said, that's, that's terrible. That's terrible uh, uh, um, media coverage. He says, let's begin with the fact that the Pope has always been okay with homosexuals. Well, I think that's what the headline said, wasn't it? Pope is okay with gays? He says, well, that's not new. The Pope's always been okay with homosexuals. Okay, maybe they just hadn't reported it then. I don't know. I don't know why he's upset about that. Then he says, in fact, by the demands of his own religion, he is required to be much more than just okay. The Christian faith teaches that every person is endowed by God with an... Uh, inviolable dignity and therefore deserves our unconditional respect and love. Now, so his definition of okay with gay is, homosexual is, he's okay with the person. All right? Now you see how we're drawing the lines? See how the lines getting blurred? Well, he's okay with gays. No, that's not what he meant. He meant he's okay with gays. Okay, I'm, I'm missing it here. We're not really real clear on where the, where the Catholics are. Then he goes on to say, a section of an Associated Press report also got the story very wrong. Summarizing the Pope's comments on homosexuals in the priesthood, the AP reported, Francis was much more conciliatory, that is, he was okay, much more okay, with, with uh, gay clergymen than the previous Pope, Pope Benedict. He was more conciliatory, saying gay, gay clergymen should be forgiven and their sins forgotten. Now, the Catholic that's writing this article says, Pope Francis didn't say that. And the report is wrong in so many levels. So, he's not okay with gay clergymen, but he is okay with homosexuals? Boy, I'm just confused. I'm confused, friends. I'm trying to demonstrate 
This is where the lines are getting blurry. Are you okay with them? Are you not okay with it? Are you okay with a homosexual? Are you not okay with a homosexual? Well, I'm okay with homosexuals. He's always been okay with homosexuals, but he's not okay with gay clergymen. And he didn't say that they should be forgiven and their sins forgotten. Well, you know what? That sounds to me like a pretty good uh, uh, statement. If you're okay with homosexuals, why wouldn't that statement be all right? So he's going ahead and he's explaining it some more. He says, first of all, it suggests that being gay itself is a sin. Well, now think with me, friends. Is homosexuality, being a homosexual, is that not a sin? See, seems to me like the Catholics are blurring the line again. Well, is it a sin or is it not a sin? Well, I'm okay with it, but I'm not okay with it. It's, you're making it sound like it's a sin, but it's really not a sin. Well, which is it? Which is it? What Pope Francis really said in response to a reporter's question about homosexual priests who are living a celibate life was this. If someone is gay and he searches for the Lord and has good will, who am I to judge? So let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. A homosexual priest living a sexual life is still gay. Okay? Is, is, that, is, that, is that clear? So we're okay with homosexuals as long as they're not homosexuals. I'm lost. I do not understand where the Catholic Church is, 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 is what they're teaching on this matter. Are they for homosexuality or not homosexuality? Are they for homosexuals or not homosexuals? Which is it? Say, which is it? Now, he goes on to say, Pope Francis simply and compassionately reiterated biblical teaching. I'm not sure that's the case. He says the Bible, now listen friends, he says the Bible and the Catholic Church have never taught <clears throat> that it is a sin to be a homosexual. Did you hear that? The Catholic priest is defending the Pope and saying that the Pope is simply reiterating what the Catholic Church has always believed, and that is that it is not a sin to be a homosexual. They teach it is a sin to have homosexual sex because it goes against the laws of God's nature, specifically his plan for human sexuality. Okay, now you see, now you see what they're doing with the line here. They've got the line so blurred that they're making a distinction between a homosexual and someone who has homosexual sex. So as long as you're not having homosexual sex, then you're a homosexual, but you're okay. So they're okay with homosexuals as long as homosexuals don't have homosexual sex. Now, is it just me, or is that just thoroughly confusing? It seems to me, friends, that if someone is a homosexual, then by definition, they are having homosexual sex. And if they are not, if they have, I'm going to use the Catholic terms here, if they are, have looked for the Lord and they have been forgiven of their sins, they're not homosexuals anymore, are they? You see, the line has been blurred to the point that people are saying, well, this is what they believe and this is what they believe. But no, homosexuality is not okay. Homosexuals are. Now, friends, that is just so confusing. But I tell you what, let's just get some clarification on what the Catholics really teach or what they really believe about homosexuality. Let's just go to the Catholic Encyclopedia and let's just find what they teach on homosexuality. Now this is what the Catholic Encyclopedia says. Now this is this has got the, the, the Catholic uh, stamp of approval. It's, it is, it is uh, uh, authorized by them. This is what they teach. It says, homosexuality. 
sexual activity between persons of the same sex. It is not a normal condition. The acts being against nature are objectively wrong. Objectively wrong. Friends, that means it's not relative. It's not, it's not, you know, it's not that gray line. It is, I mean, it's black and white. It is clear. It is objectively wrong. Such acts sometimes based in physi- uh, 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 psychiatrical or physiological compulsions are not always, watch it, subjectively sinful because of behavioral practices. These tendencies may be overcome by personal restraint or counseling. Now here's what I want, well, let me go ahead and read this, read the next one. Because I want to, I want to make a, a point about this, about the blurring the lines here. It goes on to say that the church, following scriptural teachings, has condemned and allows no justification for such actions. The sacred congregation for the doctrine of the faith in its declaration on sexual ethics states in the pastoral field, these homosexuals must certainly be treated with understanding and sustained in the hope of overcoming their personal difficulties and their inability to fit into society. Now they're, they're, now watch out. The Catholics are saying that homosexuals are abnormal. They're saying they're abnormal. And it says their culpability will be judged with prudence but no pastoral method can be employed which would give moral justification to these acts on the grounds that they would be consonant consonant with the condition of such people. For according to the, now listen right here, for according to the objective moral order. Boy, don't you just hate those objective standards? See, according to the objective moral order, homosexual relations are acts which lack an essential and indispensable finality. In the sacred scripture, they are condemned as a serious depravity and even presented at the, con- uh, at, the, at the consequence of rejecting God. And then they give some scripture. So the Catholic Encyclopedia says that homosexuality is abnormal, that it is uh, 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 against God, that it is a serious depravity, that it goes against the moral, the objective moral order, and therefore cannot be justified. Now, friends, if that is how you state, or that's what you believe or teach on homosexuality, I just don't understand how then you can turn around and say, but we're okay with homosexuals who are celibate. Friends, This is why I'm saying the lines have been blurred. Because they're not being real clear on whether it's okay or not okay. The Pope's saying he's okay with homosexuals, but we cannot justify homosexual activity, homosexual sex. Now, friends, here's what happens. Here's what happens. When you don't teach... And when you don't truly follow what the Bible teaches regarding sin and the sinner, then you're going to have this blurred line about those people who are engaged in sin or who were engaged in sin. Now let me see if I make that a little clear. The Pope said he was okay with celibate homosexuals. Now friends... If you understand the Bible, you'll understand there's no middle ground here. You are either a homosexual or you're not. Now listen to what Paul says. I'm gonna, we're going to go through a number of verses here. We're going to take our time and go through a number of these verses. But I want you to listen to the distinction, the clear line, that the New Testament teaches regarding sin and those who practice sin. Now notice this, in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 
And we're going to look at verse 9 and following. Paul's talking to Corinth, the Corinthians. The, the, Corinth, the, the folks in Corinth, the city of Corinth, were very, they were very depraved. But here's what it says. He says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now he's talking to Christians who had come out of the world of Corinth. He says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Now there's the homosexuals right there. The effeminate, nor the abusers of themselves with mankind. He's talking about them. He says, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor uh, extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now look what he says in verse 11. He says, and such were some of you. Now, when Paul talks about homosexuals, just like drunkards and anybody else, he doesn't talk about drunkards who no longer drink. He doesn't talk about homosexuals who are celibate and are not practicing homosexuality. He says such were some of you. In other words, you either are or you're not. Friends, I don't believe that there's such a thing as a homosexual who is not practicing homosexuality. If they're not practicing homosexuality, then if they're not living that lifestyle, then they cease to be a homosexual. Now, someone says, well, have urges, have desires, whatever. Okay. But look, don't, don't call it a homosexual then. If someone is struggling with some things, that doesn't mean that that's what they are. You see, all you're doing is you're telling someone, well, you, never, you, you, you still are homosexual. You just, you know, you just, you just fighting it pretty well. Well, boy, that's kind of a backhanded compliment, isn't it? Well, you're a drunkard. Well, you're not really a drunkard. Well, you're a drunkard. You just don't drink. You're a drug addict. You just don't do drugs. See, that's what, that's what I don't understand. If you're constantly telling people that this is what they are, they're just not doing something, you really not, you really haven't moved them from one place to the other, are you? Now, Paul says such were some of you. And clearly what Paul is teaching is if a person no longer does these things, they are not that thing. Look, if someone, if someone stole something and then they stop stealing, do you still call them a thief? Now you might say, well, I used to be a thief. I used to steal. I used to drink. I used to do drugs. But don't tell them that they're still those things. See that? If you've gotten out of that situation and you're no longer living that lifestyle, then why do you want to steal remind people that this is how bad they were. And see, this is what I'm saying about the Catholic Church. They're blurring the line. See, on one hand, they want to appease everybody and say, well, we're okay with homosexuals as long as, you know, as long as they're not engaged in homosexual activity. Well, friends, if they have found the Lord, if they have, if they have come to God, if they have given their life to him, and I'm using all those terms in a very loose fashion here, if they've done what the Catholic said they must do in order to be saved, then why is it that you are still holding over them a lifestyle that they have, have left? Now, if they haven't left it, then go ahead and call them homosexuals. But by the way, the Bible, the Bible teaches that homosexuality is a sin and that a homosexual is a sinner. So this business about the Catholic Church does not condemn the homosexual 
and is always okay with a homosexual is only serving to blur that line. You see that, friends? You see that? And so, let, let's go ahead and say it. If they're, if they're a sinner, let's call them a sinner. But if they're saved, let's call them saved. Let's don't call them a saved person that's still over here that, you know, is just so close to the line that they may just fall off any, any second now. All right? Now, let's look at it again. Let's look at another one. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 17. Romans 6 and verse 17. Now listen, Paul says, But God be thanked, let's back up to verse, uh, uh, let's back up another here. Verse, verse 16, Romans 6, 16. Know ye not that whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey? Whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? But God be thanked, that ye were the servants. Ye were the servants of sin. But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Now what does that do? If you obey a form of doctrine that was delivered you, a form of doctrine that will save you, Paul says you're no longer serving, you're no longer a servant of sin. What are you, what are you then? Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of, unri- uh, you became the servants of righteousness. So if you're free from sin, then you're righteous. If you are not free from sin, then you're unrighteous. So why why make a category here somewhere in the middle that says, well, you know, there's some homosexuals. They're not really sinners because they're not practicing, but you know what? They're not really over here in the saved category either because, well, they're just celibate. Friends, I don't know that I'd want to be a part of a religion that said, well, you know, if you're ever homosexual, if you ever engage in homosexual activity, you, you know, the best you could ever do is you're a homosexual that's just not pregnant. That's the best you'll ever do. Boy, what a sorry religion that is. How terrible that would be. How, how devastating. How it's, it's almost like you're just, you know, you're always sitting on the, on the edge and you just might fall off any time. And so, let's, let's go back to the Bible. The Bible says such were some of you. And my whole point is, if you were something, don't keep calling somebody that thing. Don't keep calling someone that thing. If you've changed your lifestyle and you're no longer living that lifestyle, then hey, say, I'm, I'm, I'm no longer a homosexual. I'm no longer a drunkard. I'm no longer a thief. I'm no longer an extortionist. I'm no longer a murderer. See those things? But let's, let's just move them on over here into the saved category, if that's what they've done. Paul said, when you yield yourself servants to righteousness, that's who you belong to. He says, I speak after the manner of man because of an infirmity of your flesh. Let me go and read this ver- next verse here. For as ye have yielded your member servants to uncleanness and to uh, iniquity, Unto, uh, unto uh, iniquity unto iniquity, even to now yield your members, servants to righteousness unto holiness. There's no middle ground there, friends. Paul says either you're yielding yourself members to serve unrighteousness or, and, and serve iniquity, or you yield your members to servants of righteousness unto holiness. Which is it? In the Catholic Church, you're just right there in middle ground. Because, you know, the Catholics seem to like that middle ground stuff, that little purgatory and something like that. You know, you're not really in hell, but you're not really in heaven. I guess all those celibate homosexual priests, they're just going to go to purgatory. Can't make it to heaven. Not going to go to hell, but not going to make it to heaven. I, I don't know. I don't know where this middle ground stuff comes. So stop blurring the line. Let's just call it what it is. Homosexuality. Is the same as homosexual. A homosexual practices homosexuality. And they will be condemned. Paul said they will not inherit the kingdom of, of heaven. But such were some of you, that means you're no longer practicing those things. We're not, we're not going to go back and call you, well, you're homosexual. You're just celibate. All right? Look at this phrase. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, Ephesians chapter 2, let's notice this. 
And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespass and sins. Where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. Notice, you were dead in trespass and sin, and in the past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were, now watch it, and were by nature, oh, sorry about that, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Now, friends, when you blur the line, you can't read Ephesians 2, 1 through 3, without stopping to think. Well, are you a child of wrath? Or are you a child of righteousness? Are you a child of obedience or a child of disobedience? Are you a child of God or still over a child of the devil? Paul is very clear in saying, look, you were these things. You were doing these things. You were walking in these things. He doesn't say, well, you know, since you were, you still kind of right there in the middle. You still are, but you're just not. You are a child of disobedience, but you're just not doing anything wrong. Well, you know what, if, if, if the closest you could get to righteousness in the Catholic Church is, well, you're always going to be one of those things. You're always going to be a homosexual. You're always going to be a drunk. You're always going to be fornicator, whatever. I wouldn't want to be in a religion like that. One that only, only takes you halfway to righteousness, only halfway to holiness. See, when they, when they got a blurry line there, and it's, again, it's because they don't want to upset these people over here. Well, we, we, can't, we can't just across the board say homosexuality is okay because then everybody, you know, all the moral people, you know, all the, all the, the non-homosexual people, they won't get upset and they'll leave the Catholic Church. But if we say homosexuality is wrong, or homosexual is wrong, we're going to have this group mad at us and you know, this little minority of homosexuals are so loud and vocal that they're going to cause a big uh, ruckus and stink. So, you know, we've got to kind of play it in the middle. Why do you want to blur the line, friends? Why blur the line? Let's just go what, to what the Bible is teaching and show that if you are no longer doing these things that will bring the wrath of God upon you, you obey the gospel, then you'll be over here counted in the category of the righteous who are yielding yourselves, your members, unto righteousness. Not serving iniquity. Not bringing the wrath of God upon you. See that? The Bible says clearly, there's a line. There's a line. And if you haven't obeyed the gospel, you haven't crossed the line. You don't get to straddle the fence. You don't get to sit halfway, you know. It's either, it's either one, or, or, one or, or, or nothing. All, all or nothing, okay? Now, let's get back over here. Let's look, let's look at some more verses here. Uh, and now those are, just, those are just three scriptures, friends, that we've looked at so far that clearly point out that clearly point out that uh, that clearly point out that there is a line. That Paul's making a line, a distinction. Well, let's look at another one. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4 and verse 20. All right, here we go. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 20. And we're going to read verses 20 through 22. Paul says, But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation. That's the former manner of life, the old man. You put off the old man, which is corrupt according to the seedful lust, and have renewed and have renewed in the spirit of your minds. And, and be ye renewed in the spirit of your minds. Alright? That ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Again, you can't say, well, I, I'm, I'm an old man 
and I've put off the old deeds, but I'm a new man too. No, you, what are you just somewhat new? You know, you, you're not you're not really old, but you you're not really new either. You just an old you just like an old car out in the in the junkyard and just well I'm an old car, but I've just had some you know polished it up a little bit and now I look nice and pretty and shiny, but I'm still old and rusty and beat up. Friends, that's, that's not what Paul's saying. Paul says, look, you were these things. You put off these things. Now, I don't know of anybody, I don't know of anybody that would respond, or I wouldn't think it'd be something to respond to to say, well, you're still this thing. Why blur the line between on homosexuality or anything else? Why not just say what the Bible is saying and say, look, if you've done this, you can put these things behind you. The Catholics seem to want to hold it over your head. They're blurring the line. They're blurring the line. Now, we've got the phone lines up, and if you want to call in, if you're listening on the radio, uh, we're, uh, you can call in at 888-400-3801. That's 888-400-3801. Uh, those locally, 336-484-8050 or 232-425-6044. All right, so um, phone lines are open. But now, the line, the, that line of demarcation, where is it, friends? Why would you want to be part of a system that says, well, you're always going to be part of that old man? Paul said, no, you put it off. You put it off. You're renewed. You're renewed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, Ephesians 5 and verse 8. Ephesians 5 and verse 8. Listen to what, listen to what Paul is going to say. He says, Ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Which is it, friends? Are you children of light or children of darkness? Which is it? Now, the, the Pope is trying to straddle a fence and he says, well, you know what? Well, I, I, I'm okay with homosexuals as long as they're not practicing. Well, friends, how am I just going to say I'm okay with people who have given up a homosexual lifestyle? They're not doing it anymore. Why keep holding, calling them over their, holding over their head that they're, that they're homosexuals? See, where's that line of, of demarcation? Where's that line? Are they, are they walking in the dark or are they walking in the light? See, friends, when you start blurring the line between good and evil, then people really don't know where they are. But if you tell them what the Bible is saying, then you actually give them hope that they can overcome these things, that they can overcome, they can come out of the, the sin of the world. They can give up that former lifestyle and no one's going to hold it over them. Now, I know there are people, I know there are people who have lived lives and done things that, they're not proud of. That they're not proud of. Notice this, if you would. Let's uh, go back to Romans. Uh, Romans chapter 6. And uh, I believe verse 21. Now, this is the same context where Paul said, Paul said, you were servants of righteousness. You were, were servants of, of sin. Now you're servants of righteousness unto holiness. And he says... What fruit, look at verse 21, Romans 6, 21. He says, what fruit had ye in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. You know, if there was something that I had done that I was so ashamed of, living a sinful life that I was so ashamed of, I wouldn't be going around bragging about it. I wouldn't want people saying, well, that's, you know, that's, that's the old homosexual there. That's the old drunkard there. That's the old, you know, thief there. Well, he's not a thief anymore, but, well, he's a thief. He just doesn't steal anymore. Why do you want to call him a thief? Now, Paul said he was a murderer. He's not a murderer anymore. He didn't say, well, I'm a murderer. I just haven't murdered anybody lately. See what we're talking about, friends? In the Lord's church, in the church of Christ, the New Testament church, your past is going to be your past. Now, there's some things you may not be able to deny that, that are in your past. But 
But we're not, if you have obeyed the gospel, you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine that we just read about there in Romans 6, and you have then put off that old man and the deeds thereof, then we're not going to keep calling you. We're not going to keep saying that person is, is this, this thing, this type of person, because the Bible doesn't make that distinction. The Bible says now you're a new creature. You're a new creature. And people may know that, you know what, they may know that this is your lifestyle. They may know that this was in your past. But the Lord doesn't recognize that. The Lord doesn't say, well, they're just a non-practicing sinner. So which is it, friends? Which is it? We need to make sure that the lines are clear. That's why, friends, we call sin, sin. Now, we get judged harshly on that. And I say, yeah, we get judged harshly. It's, it's, it's wrong to judge unless you're judging members of the Church of Christ. You know, I understand that. That's in second opinion somewhere, apparently, because everybody does that. But see, friends, when you start making the line of demarcation clear, this is sin and this is not sin, then people can know when they can say, beyond a shadow of doubt, you know what, I'm, I'm free of this sin. That's, that's no longer in my past. Or that's no longer my lifestyle now. You're on a, a word from the Lord. Yeah. You come back, come back lying all the time. You want to lie all the time. You don't know. You don't know. Hey, you okay? Or, uh, you don't know how to read the Bible. Sir? I say, you don't know. You don't know the, the truth in your, in your head. Well, I don't know why you'd call me a liar, sir. I've been reading out of the Bible. No, you did not. I've been reading out of the Bible, sir. No, you did not. I can, know you, how, can you see this right I here? I how you doing. My wife, I was up out of the way. I saw what you read out. You, you, don't, you don't read out of the Bible. I, I'm reading out of the Bible right here, sir. It's on the screen right in front of you. This I is the Bible. I know it is. Now, my, that's why I say you don't read out of the Bible. I'm reading out of the Bible. I've got it right here. And then you're saying that I'm not reading out of the Bible. Yeah, you don't. But now, I am. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know what you're doing to when you die. I do. You're not being hey. You go hell before you die. You saying that I'm going to go to hell when I die? Yeah. Now, why are you judging me? You ain't got no saying. Your mind not wise. And you stand on stuff. Now, how do you know, sir? I've never stole anything. Uh, I know you real good. You know me real well? Yeah, I know you real well. You don't know who I am. I do, too. How do you... I don't want that. I don't want that. You got a big mouth, though. <laughs> well, sir, you're doing a pretty good job of, of demonstrating that yourself. No, how, I how know. Do you, why, I know. Why do you I say know. that I'm a thief? I, I know you don't. Well, if, if you know me so well, who are you? Huh? Who are you? If you know me so well, who are you? You don't know your baby who I am. I know who you are. I know. I think I know who you are. Yeah, you do too. Yeah, are you? Uh, are, are you? Hey, I, wait a minute. Next time, next time you do what you did in me, I'm Bubba. I'm okay, what I'm going to do. I'm okay, you'll find a way to find you and I'm going to fall as I can. Okay. Well, how about how about if I just play what you did for everybody? Would that be okay? I'm gonna call the bank law and have you close down for do it. Sir, you could call the law on me, but you're the one who was walking down the sidewalk. I stopped at a red light, and you started cussing me. Hey, right. now you lie right there. Now, sir, I've got it on the phone. You just said I have it on. I have it on my phone. Now you're a liar. No, I'm not a liar, sir. Hey. Hey. Sir, I'm not a liar. Hey. I pulled up to hey. the red light. I was I had my window rolled down. Hey. I wasn't even paying attention to you and you hey. started cursing you me. You can't out with me. Hey, you can't out with me. That way I be a pound bub I be waiting for you to come out your street. Now, and why I'm there, more had a whole vault, more had a vault, more had a KK all up there waiting for you to come out your street. Now now you're threatening me, right? No. You're, you're, the, you're the man. You're the man. You're the man. You're the man. Hey, who, you're the man. Who, you're the man. Who, 
Oh, no. Sir, well, how about you answer this? See if this is a lie. You kicked my car one time. You're a liar. <laughs> now, sir, I had a whole van full of people in it. Hey, I kicked your tire. I did not kick your car. Well, well, excuse me. Tire. Excuse me. The tire is not part of the car. Yeah, I kicked your tire. Okay, you did, I did kick not it. Hit okay. Your car. All right. Uh, Let's just clarify that. You did kick it. Okay. And and and, and, and what was I doing? I, Nothing. I did not hit your car. Okay. And okay. one day, you were not on a car. You were on a van. Oh, yeah, let's make that distinction here. Be sure. It's, it was a van, not a car. Okay. Let's get real precise here. Well, I appreciate your call. Thank, thanks, for, thanks for clearing that up. Yeah, yeah, folks, that gentleman, uh, <laughs> uh, I just put up a stoplight, and he just, he just looked over at me and started cursing me, telling me I'm going to hell and so forth. And so I just pulled my phone out and started recording it. I mean, what am I supposed to do? And so, uh, but, I, you know, I, 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 that's fine. That's fine. He can, he can say all he wants to, threaten me. That's fine. I'm not worried about him. What I'm more concerned about is his soul. I mean, here's a man that calls up. I'm reading the Bible and says I'm a liar. But you know what, friends? That's fine. That's fine. Here's the standard. Here's the standard. By what, by what standard is he calling me a liar? There's no proof that I'm, that I'm a liar. I've never lied to him. As a matter of fact, he was the one pushing his mother down the road in a wheelchair when he came up to my van and kick the tire. Now, you know, you talk about being accosted, being assaulted or threatened or whatever. I mean, here's, the, here's the, the evildoer here. But friends, when we're making lines of demarcation, we're saying clearly this is what's right and what's wrong. This is what you get. People get upset about that. So we can blur the line. We can blur the line and kind of appease them, make them feel good about themselves. But that doesn't help them. That doesn't help them. And so what we need to, what we need to realize is, you know, what, what is right and what is wrong. Let's don't blur the line. In Colossians 3, verses 5 through 7, notice this. Again, the distinction that's made by the Apostle Paul. He said, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, that just means desire, and, uh, and covetousness, which is, idolatry. Now notice, he says, mortify your members. Put them to death. Put to death the things that, like these, put these things to death. And he says, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. Now when ye lived in them, that's past tense. When you walked in them, that's past tense. That means you were continually doing them. And my whole point that I'm trying to get you to see, friends, is when someone obeys the gospel, when someone obeys the gospel, what they've done in their past life, God has taken care of. He's removed those sins when they obey the gospel. And we will not just keep going, well, you know, this is what he is. He's kind of, he ain't really quite made it to a new man. He just... He's just an old man that's not practicing anymore. Really? Really? How about they have put to death fornication? How about the, they put to death the, the stealing? How about they've put to death all these, these things from the old man and now they're living, a new, they're living a new life? They're not walking in those things anymore. How about that? And so that's what we're simply saying. We're simply saying we're trying to i uh, show you the Bible does make a distinction. And it doesn't simply keep holding things over your head like the Catholics seem to be doing. And when the Catholics blur that line, then the whole society says, well, are they for it or are they against it? They must be okay with it. Yeah, we're okay with it. We're not okay with it. Friends, you'll never, you'll never make that mistake with us. Homosexuals. Homosexuals are part of the list of individuals that God says will not inherit the kingdom of God. They're lost. Those who live that lifestyle, those who live that lifestyle will be damned. Now, it's not just homosexuals, though. It's everybody else that was lifted, listed there. Listen, in 1 Peter 4, verses 2 and 3, we've got just a time to do this. 1 Peter 4 and verse 2. Listen to what Peter says. Peter says, He that no longer 
that he no longer should live the rest of his life in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. Now, if someone has, has obeyed the gospel, we're not going to keep saying, well, they're a sinner. They just not act upon it. No, no. They're not, they're not living their life to the lust of flesh, but to the will of God. For the time past, our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, uh, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. You used to walk in those things. Friends, you don't do it anymore. You know, you say, well, you know, I used to, uh, you might say, well, I used to go to all the clubs and party all night and, and, and drink and so forth, but I don't do that anymore. You know what? If you obey the gospel, God has taken care of those things, and we don't, we're not going to go around and say, well, you know what? He's a drunkard. He just don't drink. That's my whole point, friends. But when you blur the line between right and wrong, between good and evil, then everybody starts crossing it, and pretty soon the evil becomes good. It becomes acceptable. And the good actually becomes what is condemned, just like the caller demonstrated. Okay. Well, friends, we're, we're about out of time. We're going to wrap up. I want you to know I appreciate your attention and hope that we can help you in any way. If you have uh, any questions you want to ask us, please feel free to do so. Come by and visit us at 250 Boulevard. You can reach me at 276-340-2653. Until next time, always remember to ask, what does the Bible say? And you always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Don't flex your muscles. Flex your mind. Watch a word from the Lord. Thursday nights at 9. I did it for science. Real Local, WGSR 47.1 in high definition. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Thursday edition of Star News on WGSR 47.1.